All right, everybody. So today we're moving on to the second lesson in your flight training exercise six, straight and level flight. So what we're going to cover, we're going to talk about, you know, what is straight flight and the heading indicator. We're going to talk about level flight. We'll talk about attitude plus power equals performance. We'll combine them together for straight and level flight, both at the same time. Talking about adjusting our cruise speed, whether we want to speed up or slow down. And then we'll finish talking about the trim wheel. So your reference for this lesson is going to be the flight training manual, exercise six. The goal of this lesson is to teach you how to fly at a constant heading and at a constant altitude. Uh, you'll also get introduced to the different attitude and power settings. Uh, and it's one of the, another basic skill that you need to learn in order to fly to a destination. So the reasoning behind this, to fly from point A to point B, you must be able to fly a constant heading and maintain your altitude. You can't be turning all over the place. You can't be climbing and descending. So before we get into it, we'll go over our background knowledge from our last lesson. If you'd like to pause the video and go through the questions and answer them, and then I'll bring up the answers here. So uh, what does our cruise attitude like look like? We got two answers that would work here. The first, one-third ground, two-thirds sky. Uh, and then you could also use a reference like three fingers or four fingers of the nose position below the horizon. What control surface affects pitch? That control surface would be the elevator. How do you complete an effective lookout? A good method here is to be using a four quadrant scan, splitting that windscreen up into four quadrants and scanning each quadrant individually, opposed to scanning the entire thing all at once. One cause of unwanted yaw, last lesson we covered the slipstream. Uh, here's all five listed here. We got adverse yaw, spiraling slipstream, P factor, gyroscopic precession, and torque. So, definitions for today. A constant heading is just maintaining a desired magnetic direction. So, whether that be 0, 8, 1. Your uh, straight track would be applying a wind correction angle to a heading and allow the airplane to fly in a straight line between point A and point B. This is necessary anytime you're flying with a crosswind. That crosswind's going to try to blow you off track, so we have to turn into the wind to prevent that. Level flight, whenever I refer to this, it's just going to be flying at a constant altitude, so maintaining 4,500 feet. All right, so now let's look at straight flight here with no wind. So straight flight's achieved by flying a constant heading. In order to do so, you have to keep the wings level. If you keep those wings level, uh, you control yaw, you're going to be just flying on a constant heading. If you do allow that airplane to bank for a little bit, it's going to start to turn and it'll turn off the heading. So very important to look outside, keep your wings level. And to help you stay on your heading a very handy method is to pick a point far out ahead of you and just fly straight towards that point as long as you're going towards your point your heading will not have changed so if you look at our picture here you can see the road and it looks like a big mountain or a hill here near the horizon if you just keep the nose pointed straight at that reference your heading is not going to change this allows us to keep our eyes outside keep the wings level and look for traffic you want to avoid staring at your heading indicator and limit looking inside as much as possible. All right, so now let's look what happens when we got some wind here. So to fly a straight track with any crosswind present, you, know, you got to add a wind correction angle. This is called crabbing into the wind. So when you crab into the wind, you're pointing into the wind to correct for any drift. We can relate this to a boat crossing a river. On the left hand side of the diagram we have there's no current and there's no wind so if the top of your screen is north the heading is north and so is the track represented by this yellow line now if we look at the second diagram you can see the heading is still north but now we have a current pushing us down and we got the wind pushing us and the track 
is to the right of the heading, right? Maybe to the northeast. So that's your track. Now we want to avoid this because it's going to blow us off track and obviously we're not going to get to our destination. So yet when you crab into the wind, you adjust your heading into the wind. So you can see the heading now is roughly northwest, but our track is still directly over the road or directly across the river. Um, so this is crabbing into the wind and how you would fly a straight track over top of a road with a crosswind. Let's talk about the heading indicator. So the heading indicator does suffer from uh, precession over time. There is a little bit of friction in the bearings, so it's going to cause it to turn off um, of your set heading. Uh, there's also per apparent precession from the earth rotating beneath you as you're flying along. So over time, your heading is going to be become unsynchronized from your compass. So it may only be 5 or 10 degrees, but it does make a big difference. So to overcome this, what you have to do every 15 minutes or so, look at your heading and look at your compass when you're in straight and level unaccelerated flight to make it easy. And make sure that they're matching. If your heading is off, you would just adjust it to the compass, okay? All right, so now level flight, flying at a constant altitude. A good power setting for this exercise is gonna be 2300 RPM to start. That's a, a cruise power setting for the 172. Uh, the instruments you're gonna referring to is your altimeter in the top right of the six pack and your vertical speed in the bottom right of the six pack. Uh, very important that you do not stare at these instruments. You wanna be looking outside as much as possible, but you will need to reference them for a second or two. All right, attitude plus power equals performance. You're gonna hear this a lot through your flight training. So basically, if you wanna maintain the same performance and you adjust either your attitude, you're gonna to have to adjust the power, right? So for the performance to stay the same, if you adjust your power, you're gonna to have to adjust the attitude. Um, you have to control both of them. They each have an effect on the other. So in order to maintain straight level flight while speeding up or slowing down, you'll have to control both the attitude and the power. So if we're in cruise and maybe we are getting a little bit too close to the airplane in front of us, um, or we're around an airport, so we want to slow down. So to achieve a slower cruise speed, we're going to follow those four steps here. So step number one is going to be the power. So we reduce the power. This is going to cause the aircraft to slow and it'll want to descend down, which we do not want to do in level flight. So to main level, maintain level flight, you're going to lift the nose up and this is going to produce a little bit more lift and, and prevent that descent. So first power, then attitude. Lastly, you'll have to trim the airplane. So to trim the airplane, uh, we'll cover that at the very end, but it is our last step. You always want to be thinking ahead of the airplane um, and be planning what's going to happen next. So if you want to slow down, one rule of thumb you can use is 100 RPM equals approximately 5 knots or 100 feet per minute uh, in a descent. We'll just focus on the 5 knots for today. So we don't care about the the feet per minute descent, all we care about is the five knots. So if we're going 2300 RPM and we're going 95 knots, what would be the power setting for 85 knots? Well, if we know 100 RPM is five knots, we want to slow down by 10 knots. So we have to reduce 200 RPM, giving our power setting of 2100 RPM. So if we're in cruise at 2395 and we're going to follow our procedure, power, you're going to reduce the power to 2100. Attitude is once you start to, to see a descent, you'll just gently pitch the nose up to maintain level flight and lastly trim. So that's your steps for slowing down. Power, attitude, trim. The exact same steps for faster cruise here, except we're going to be increasing the power because we want to go faster. So to achieve a faster cruise speed, the power will have to be increased. This is going to cause the aircraft to accelerate and it'll want to climb. So to prevent the climb, 
we'll have to lower the nose, reducing the lift, and maintaining level flight. Lastly, you would trim the airplane. So in this scenario, if we have 2,200 RPM, we're going 90 knots, what would be your power setting for 105? Well, we want to increase the airspeed by 15 knots. That would be 300 RPM using our little formula there. So our new power setting would be 2,500 RPM. So if you think ahead of the airplane and you plan it before you do it, it's going to be a lot easier for you. So step number one, power. Well, how much? Okay, you figure it out. You set 2,500. Attitude, gently lower. And then you're going to trim the airplane. One thing to remember, we learned about slipstream last lesson. When you're making those small power changes, you are going to have some yaw associated with it. So if you're increasing the power, it's going to want to yaw to the left. It might take some right rudder. And if you decrease the power, you'll need less rudder. So you could use less of your right rudder to stay coordinated. So looking at our instruments here, remember we're not fixating on the instruments. We just glance at them briefly to help us out. Our airspeed is going to be constant. The attitude indicator, wings level, nose close to the horizon. Your altimeter will be constant at whatever altimeter the uh, altitude you want to be at. Here we're sitting at 6,000. The turn coordinator, you want the wings level and the ball in the center. Your heading indicator will be set to the heading that you have selected. Here it's set to 0, 1, 5. And your vertical speed should be 0. Now if your vertical speed, you're in a bit of a climb, you would just lower the nose a little bit. And if you're descending, you would just lift the nose up a little bit. So you just use that pitch to control your, your uh, vertical speed, your altitude while you're in cruise. All right, lastly, we've got to talk about the trim wheel here. So uh, the trim wheel is your best friend in a 172. It's very important to trim the airplane. It's going to decrease the pilot workload, and it's going to help you maintain level flight or maintain, it's going to maintain your attitude, I should say. Uh, so let's go through our procedure for trimming the airplane. Starting with step number one, you set the desired attitude. So using the control yoke you look outside and you set the attitude that you want to maintain so while you have that set let's say if you're holding the nose on the horizon and the nose wants to keep dropping down we're going to have to trim the plane so you set the nose on the horizon um, and if you you would feel that pressure of the nose wanting to drop so if the nose wants to drop down, you're going to have to trim it nose up. So you're going to move your indicator down towards nose up. So you're going to spin the, the wheel down. Um, and that's going to help prevent that nose down tendency as we trim the nose up. So step number three, we want to assess the trim. So hands off the yoke and eyes outside and watch what happens to the nose. If it, it may... If it stays on the horizon where you want it, perfect. You can leave it there and just return back to, to flying the airplane. You have it trimmed properly. If the nose wants to continue to drop down, then we got to reset from step number one. So hands on the yoke, lift the nose back up, set the attitude that you want, trim it more, nose up, so you'd spin the wheel down. And then assess your trim, hands off, and just watch the nose. You're just making sure it's not pitching down, not pitching up. It should stay exactly where you have it. Um, the trim wheel could be a little bit tricky to get used to. You'll get you'll you'll get it just with practice. Um, but if you're having to push forward on the yoke, you know the nose wants to come up. You would trim it nose down. And if you want to pull, if you're having to pull back on the yoke, so the nose is wanting to drop you're going to have to trim it nose up. Couple safety notes for today. We want to make sure that we're looking outside, scanning the windscreen in a four quadrant scan uh, in order to, to pick up any traffic that could be out there in the practice area today. And ensure you're doing a good lookout before you do any really nose high attitudes because we may or not be able to see directly in front of us. 
And lastly, just confirming who has control. So we'll continue with I have control, you have control. We introduced that in the last lesson. Uh, we'll use it throughout your flight training. Review questions. So once again, you can pause the video if you'd like, and we'll run through these. So what is the procedure to achieve a slower cruise speed while maintaining the same altitude? Well, we go power, attitude, trim, and to slow down, we reduce the power. So you're going to reduce the power, you're going to pitch the nose up, and you're going to trim the airplane. If we want to achieve a faster cruise, you're going to add power, gently lower the nose for level of flight, and trim the airplane. Next question, what control surface is used to keep the wings level? That would be your ailerons. And what flight in instruments do we use to make sure we are in level flight? Well, primarily looking outside, right? Primarily we're just looking outside, focused on the attitude of the airplane, and then you'll reference your altimeter and your vertical speed. Awesome. So today we covered straight and level flight. Uh, we'll practice them individually to start, then we'll combine them together. We'll practice adjusting your cruise speed. Uh, we learned how to trim the airplane. Uh, now this is one of the basic fundamentals of flight. Next, we're going to go over climbing and descending. If you have any questions about this lesson, please leave them in the comments below, and I'd be happy to answer those for you. And you can read up on the flight training manual, exercise 7 and 8, climbing, descending for our next lesson.